Welcome to the Empower Hour podcast. I am your host, Amber Dobkins. The purpose of this podcast is to inspire women to embrace their inner voice and speak their truth. We are continuing our series called Embody Your Most Courageous Self. So you will hear from eight amazing women on how they embodied their most courageous self. And today's guest is a powerful woman who went from extreme childhood trauma, struggling with drugs and suicidal thoughts, almost being abducted, um, going through partner abuse, multiple near-death experiences, and being bullied as an immigrant due to the language barrier. And she went through all of that, and now she is a self-mastery coach. She's also a shadow work practitioner, somatic release therapist, kundalini yoga instructor, inner journeys ecstatic dance facilitator, rebirth doula, and inner child therapist. Not only all of that, but she's also an author in the new book, Jaguar Medicine, which comes out in January 2022. Her chapter in the book is called Wounds as Portals Back to Our Power. I'm so excited to read her chapter and to chat with my Jaguar sister today, Marina Ninovska. Did I say your name right? Killing it. Thank you. <laughs> it's a miracle. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for that amazing introduction and for having me on. Like, I know that you're such a powerhouse woman yourself, so it's such a privilege and honor for me to get to connect with you in this way and also share, like, you know, different stories from my past and, you know, how, like, we're not bound to our, like, extreme circumstances that once limited us. And I think it's so powerful to get these stories out there so people can be assured that, like, Your past doesn't have to predict your future and we're the ultimate co-creators of our reality day in and day out right oh my goodness yes i couldn't agree with you more i love how you put that so and i know that you're passionate about the trifecta and finding the transformation through the challenges and the chaos and can you just tell us a little bit more about that and what it means to you oh my goodness Yes. So this golden trifecta that I use deeply in my own practice and with my clients is the following. The first point is that we must conquer from within. Like if we are out to live an exceptional life and fulfill our purpose and really come back into our power and experience true freedom, evolution and liberation in this lifetime we have to realize that like our outer world is a constant mirror of what's within and if we want absolutely anything to change in our relationships in our work in the way that we feel about ourselves and so on it's all going to be an inside job and oftentimes it's all going to be stemming from your past especially your childhood So unless we really want to feel a shift or a difference in the way that we experience ourselves and life today, we have to be ready to get our hands dirty and go into our inner world and start dissecting, unpacking, processing, and integrating those events that occurred within the past that were traumatic, that were um, jarring, that made us begin to doubt and question ourselves and create inner reconciliation and resolution so we can actually start moving forward in our present day moment and so like what that means to me is just like conquer from within it's just like trust me no matter how many affirmations we want to say or how much we want to shift our day-to-day behavior from the conscious mind and from just like conscious day-to-day actions it's not going to last or have impact unless we go into the subconscious and really start exploring our shadow side, our inner child, and the pain that lives there, the suffering that goes on in the more unconscious aspects of our psyche. So that's number one, but I'd love to hear what your thoughts on that, because I know we deeply align on this, and I know there's so much value in your perspective here. Oh my goodness, like you just opened it up with such a powerful thought and and process, and I totally agree with everything that you say. I've experienced that too, where when I don't tap into my subconscious or I don't allow the trauma to emerge and the memories to come up, 
then I stuff them down and it seems to affect my mind, my body, my emotions, and even my spiritual divinity. Like I, I feel disconnected from myself, from this, from source or spirit and um, allowing all of that to be observed and processed, then, then I can release it and find the, the treasure in it and use that experience and that wisdom for the future. But it all, like you said, it all starts with the subconscious, that inner child, that that uh, trauma from our childhood wounds and all of those things. So it's not always fun. It's It's a process and it can be painful, but honestly, it's so worth it. And on the other side, there's so much joy and happiness and freedom that comes from doing that work. Totally. Like I so deeply believe that like our capacity for joy, love, um, compassion is all in direct ratio to our ability to hold our pain and to be with our darkness. It's just like this spectrum that like the more you grow in one direction, as in like holding the discomfort, the unease, the suffering, the turmoil, the more you're stretched the uh, in the other direction as well to feel more ecstasy, more bliss, more self understanding and connection. And so it's just kind of like there's no one without the other, there's no darkness without the light. But I feel like so much in a lot of like the new age deception, there's so much gold in the new age, but there's also, I feel like a lot of um, rhetoric that actually stifles us where it's just like fluffy, light and love, focus only on the good, like uh, bypass anything that feels bad, you know? And I'm just like, oh no, 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 no. Like you said, we're literally missing the gold and the pain because, you know, our pain takes us where the healing needs to be, where the growth needs to be. And if we're literally missing out on that, it's just like, we're literally stifling our evolution so deeply and our ability to actually be present in the moment and not just running on our survival instincts and looking for danger and living in fear, right? Yes, I love what you just said. And I'm gonna see if I can repeat it, but um, we're stifling our evolution if we're not accepting that the experiences that come to us, even if they're painful, can can you just repeat what you the quote or? Um, I don't like it's already gone. It's just <laughs> no, it's good. Through. It's good. No, but I love that, and I so resonate with it. Yes, it it does stifle us if we don't embrace it. Because you know, just like pain and suffering is also a part of life, and you know what we resist persists. And I genuinely believe that the universe is always handing us exactly what we're meant to like grow through and evolve through on a silver platter in what is. So as we're going through like intense circumstances, challenges, even like relationship turmoil, it's like we're supposed to be asking uh, what's available to me here. What kind of deeper pain is being shown to me through this nuance that needs addressing, loving, and integrating, and knowing that like we're living within the realm of sacred mirrors. So everything that triggers us, every insecurity, everything that creates friction in our lives is just, again, showing us where there's room for a deeper TLC in our inner world so we can find, like you said, the treasure and the wisdom in it. Like, what is this showing me? that I still have in my past that's ruling my reality right now. And by giving it the attention and the care that it deserves, I can transmute it and move on with my life without feeling like I'm still like siphoned in any way or like clear my perspective rather to be able to see myself in the world in a more illuminated and transparent way. Mm, I love that, the illumination. That, that's a word, um, radiance and illumination and shining is it so resonates with me. So yeah, because a lot of times I feel like we dim our light, we keep ourselves small and we let the trauma hold us back. There's like a limitation, whereas if we can transmute it, it does, it, it allows us to illuminate and be our true self. So beautiful. Right. 
Because I think, yeah, exactly. For as long as we hold on to that pain, it taints our lens for how we view ourselves. Like it, it cripples our self-esteem. Our, we know it cripples your self-worth, what you even pursue in life, what you think you're capable of. And we don't usually even realize that it's those events that keep these disempowering narratives, belief systems, stories going. And it's like, if we just go back and target those events to create deep healing around them, then we won't have these stories running anymore. And then we'll be free to actually like love ourselves and actually pursue what we want to do in the world. And it is that simple, not easy, but definitely simple. (laughs) Yes, (laughs) it so is. I know sometimes I get through something and I, and in my mind, it's this big, huge thing. And then I get through it and you're right. It's like, it was that simple. It was literally just changing that story, which can be a process, but it is really a simple concept. Totally. It's like root cause analysis. I think we like love to work within band-aid solutions. You know, if I could just, you know, like apply this tactic or this technique or this more healthy soothing mechanism on this, like one day I'll love myself. One day I will no longer question and doubt all my decisions. One day I'll choose better partners. And it's like, no, no, no. Why don't we just come go to the cause? And yes, being with the root cause with the root trauma will, you know, be confrontational and sensitive and messy. But honestly, we never get served anything that we're not cut out for. And because you have trauma, you're meant to work through it so you can help other people with it as well. Like whether you're going to be a practitioner or even just in your own inner circle to literally work through generational trauma or support your friends in becoming who they're meant to be, whatever the case is, like, just be like, this wouldn't be in me if it wasn't a part of my purpose. And I might as well go back to the origin and like learn to build my emotional intelligence, learn how to be a feeling based human and understand that this is a part of mastering the human condition and then leverage the shit out of it. So I could just completely embrace what I'm here to do because everything that's in front of me and everything what was, was there to shape and mold me and give me the wisdom that I have today to do something special and meaningful with my life, right? Oh my goodness, yes, just trusting that process. And like you said, then trusting ourselves um, and really, really allowing it to happen through us and for us and bring us to a better place. I, I totally agree. So, I mean, you you have obviously transmuted and transformed so much in your life and you've been through a ton how did you get to that point of embodying that within yourself i mean you had some very traumatic things that that happened to you and and um you know those feel like things that might be difficult to really change the story and the narrative and become empowered by it oh my gosh i think like all of it is a matter of like doing the work to shift your perspective because i genuinely believe like a miracle is a shift in perception And I also believe that like literally life is a self-realization simulation. And it's honestly holding on to these like sacred directives or like this golden trifecta where the other two points are like with chaos comes clarity and what doesn't challenge you doesn't change you. And really holding on to the meaning of these virtues that has helped me transcend so much of my past and helps me continue to navigate the storms of a now as the world continues to shift and ultimately fall apart for our, you know, for us to rise again, shaping a completely new reality. And I guess like, so just to be clear on your question, besides what I just shared, like you're asking kind of like, how did that come about? Like, how did I end up navigating those things? Yeah, yes. Um, I think, I mean, I was just desperate. You know, I think so many of us when we're experiencing suffering in our day to day, which all humans do, but some of us more than others, because we're so much more on edge and so much more in survival because of how much trauma and repressed emotions we hold in our body. And of course, Because like the more trauma you have, the more you attract people that are not good for you, or maybe they're good for you, but they still feel so much more edgier than other people experience in relationships because there's so much pain near the surface. And I was just like, I just can't do this anymore. If I'm going to be with another partner that 
completely like either screws me over or abuses me or like doesn't love me for who I am like I just won't make it or like if I have to live another day hating myself this much I just don't think I want to stick around any longer so my at the time when I started this journey which was at 17 I was just like at wit's end I obviously didn't have the consciousness to really understand or even know where I was going but at that point I just knew that like if I was to go on in my life like something had to start to change and it was a very slow burn at the beginning because I was still so confused and I didn't understand why I was having such a hard time just living but um I just started like seeking and I think any desperate person that I think most people that pursue a spiritual journey are either hurt or full of despair or also lack self-love. And they're just like, OK, like what is the first thing available to me that I can start trying on just to feel better for one freaking minute? And that's where I was at the time. I was using a lot of drugs. I was partying. I was just constantly overdosing, trying to kill myself, just like trying to escape who I was in my reality every single way that I could. And so after one specific overdose at this music festival I was at, at in the mountains, um, I remember praying and I had no connection to God at that time, but I was just like laying there and I felt myself like leaving my body. And I think I was actually verging on a brain aneurysm and I was just abandoned in this tent in the middle of the night. And I just said, God, like, if you let me survive and give me another chance at life, I promise I'm going to do something different. I like, I promise I will shift trajectories. Like, I don't know what it is and what that will look like, but like something has got to give and I'm going to finally step into the driver's seat and give it a go, whatever that looks like. And so from then on, to answer your question, sorry, this is long winded. Um, I just, at the time I was already interested in crystals. So I started dabbling more in crystal healing and meditation. Then I got super obsessed with like Tibetan practices. And I went to study under multiple monks and did some retreats in compassion and mindfulness um, in just like traditional Chinese medicine that got me into yoga you know they're all like <laughs> tied together and i was just again desperate to get out of suffering and these practices gave me moments of peace moments where my mind wasn't literally trying to either destroy or scrutinize me and it helped me find my way back into the body because i had so much trauma i was always living in my head i never felt safe to actually feel in my physical being and when I was doing those practices it kind of like one I didn't realize that I was learning how to get into my body but I just knew that it felt good and it felt safe so I just kept seeking that and then I literally did every yoga teacher training you could possibly do and started teaching that and then went to study like shamanic trance dance and then that's like ecstatic dancing and started teaching that like every modality for somatic release I could find to take people through either movement journeys or dance journeys where they can go into their pain and then come out in ecstasy on the other side. And then that ended up taking me to energy healing and therapy and so on, you know, it was just like, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher appears and it was like that all the way through. I had no idea where I was going, but I was just chasing my own healing. And that turned into like all these tools that I didn't realize I was meant to offer other people. So I hope that answers the question. Wow, no, it does. And it's so interesting um, just where you came from, just being out in the woods, left in a tent, not knowing if you're going to survive to where you are today, just little by little and trusting the process and what felt comfortable for you and safe for you, it sounds like, um, and and allowing that to just come into your life one moment at a time and to, to have all of these wonderful tools in your tool belt to share not only with, for your own healing, but now helping others with that is a beautiful story. Thank you. I think like different medicine for different times 
you know, it's like, I, I'm not even there anymore with a lot of those practices. Like, yes, like I'll pull on them sometimes, but like, they're not really my go-tos as much as they once were. And then I also believe that like, we're always given what we're needed when it is needed. Like you said, trusting the journey and the process. And I just like reflect back and I'm like, wow, like once you declare something to God or the universe, like we so often bypass how quickly it's delivered. Usually you just don't know the package that it'll come in. So we think we're never supported and our manifestations aren't aren't coming to life when really it's like, of course they are, but you're just expecting it to look one way and it's coming in a completely different one. And then we just have to know that like, have the right lens for everything all of the time. Like we're talking about, like, it's like asking yourself the right questions when something is taking place and knowing that every challenge is here to transform and shape you and allow yourself to be forged by the fire and know that this is God too. Like even the challenge is preparing you for what you asked for, you know? Yes, for sure. I love that. And, and I agree so much that we need to take a step forward and, and then trust that the divine will meet us there. Because so many times I feel like people ask for help, but then they don't take that step forward. They don't, they just, why aren't you helping me? Aren't, why aren't you helping me? But you have to do something to help yourself also and take that step like you did with the crystals and, and seeking and saying, okay, I'm gonna try this on. And if it doesn't work, I, it's like a new outfit. I, I don't have to buy it. I can take it off and, and try something else on. And, and just trusting that the right thing will come when it's meant to. And you'll know, you just will know that it's for you. Oh my gosh, totally. And oftentimes that's, yeah, also part of like, I'm so passionate about like new age deception now, because like, that's been so much of my world over the last two years. Again, not all of it, but so much of it that actually keeps us passive and bypassing again where the real work is that will create the real transformation and such a big part of that is just like sit down wait for it to land on your lap if it's meant for you it'll find you like to the extreme extent and you're like no 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 like you said it's a co-creation like if you're in 3d in the physical plane you're meant to take action okay like we can think we can vibrate <laughs> we can do all the energy healing ever but unless you're taking steps in a new direction to match your intentions no one's gonna meet you halfway and it's just kind of like if we want to be empowered and courageous you know and bold leaders in our own domain, whatever that looks like, that's going to look like leadership. And what is leadership? It's taking the first step and extending your hand back and bringing people with you, right? So it's just kind of like God wants that of us because we're meant to be agents of God or universe spirit, whatever you believe in, you know? So it's just kind of like, oh, am I bypassing the point altogether by like buying into these concepts that feel comfortable and easy? when really I'm just like deceiving myself of what this human journey is supposed to be like. <laughs> yes, it's so true. I mean, I know I did that to myself, self-sabotage, self-abandonment. And then I would sit there and be like, why is everybody leaving me? But I was leaving myself. I was sabotaging myself and abandoning myself. And until I had the awareness of that, I couldn't change that pattern. I was just in a cycle of people doing it to me because we how we treat ourselves is how we treat others to teach us so becoming aware of that and transmuting that and saying okay i see the pattern here i see the wisdom in it i want to transmute that and learn from it in a healthier way uh, uh to rise above it and let go of that pattern that it no longer serves me i don't need it anymore and i will no longer abandon myself or sabotage myself Oh my gosh, all the gold. Yes. <laughs> and especially I think it's like understanding too that like anything we do, no matter like how detrimental is just a survival strategy continuing to be played out from the past. Like we're like, oh shit, I have to do this in order to be loved. And I got to make sure I don't do that. So I don't get rejected. And most of our behavior is just trying to avoid either physical or emotional threat. That's where like people pleasing comes from being a doormat, control freak, workaholic, whatever your like self-sabotage archetype is, you know, it's just like literally a 
accumulation or a combination of behaviors where we learn to get by, right, as children and to get our needs met and to avoid danger. And now as adults, you know, like, I love that one quote, I don't remember who it's by, but like, your past isn't something along the lines of like, your past isn't your fault, but your healing is your responsibility, Mm. sort of deal. And once we realize just how infested our current behaviors and coping mechanisms, addictions, and so on, are literally just a byproduct of like who we had to be to live in the world and to like avoid, you know, bullying, rejection or whatever your threats were at the time are, is like basically who you are today. And now it's just like, well, shit, I don't want to keep self-sabotaging or keep allowing people to treat me a certain way, but that will only change. Like you've been saying (laughs) by actually observing what's outdated and expired and why the pattern why the pattern is still here and how it's still serving us to some degree and then showing ourselves evidence that it doesn't have to be this way and that we could do something different and still survive wow yes so what do you what do you think some of that is when we how do we recognize when something is outdated or expired or a story that it's just time to change and heal I just like look at the pain, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like where the pain is, is where like we're meant to be like creating again, healing or transforming. So literally it's just like, okay, like let's make it super simple. It's just like, um, we're just like observing our day to day, like analyzing where we're experiencing any kind of inner turmoil or friction or like running up against, let's say the same kind of person. You know what I mean? And then we can ask ourselves like, okay, like, um, why do I keep like accepting this? Um, and like, what is the merit to me? Like allowing this in my life? Cause that will start disclosing, like, let's say more of like the old beliefs and narratives that this is all we're worth. This is what we're deserving of. And then we can connect back to like what events in my past made me believe this in the first place. Because if I didn't have this in my subconscious, I wouldn't be seeking for it in my conscious life, you know, because we're always just like running around with like blinders on looking for stuff that reaffirms the beliefs we carry in the subconscious mind, you know, so it's just like, okay, I must already believe all these things about myself and looking for stuff that matches it. And then also like, going back to what I just said about like, look at where the pain is, or like, look at where the stuff that's creating destruction in your life, and just be like, okay, how is this serving me? You know what I mean? It's just like, clearly, I'm getting some needs met if I'm still doing this, you know, and then also it's just like, um, what am I afraid of happening if I let this go? Because usually we only hold on to something because we're scared that like, if we don't do it, we're going to miss out or we're going to get hurt. And then like, um, also like, where does my attachment to this reside? So I guess these are more of like the next steps. First, you look at where the pain is. That's the answer to your question. And then it's like, if you want to make a change, first answer these three questions and then start looking at your past. Because again, it's just like your impressions of who you were from your childhood and what the world is from your childhood still rules the way that we decide to behave today. That was a little messy, but I hope that makes sense. No, it made total sense. I, I resonated with it so much because I agree. Like for me, I noticed that um, frustration, I get frustrated that I'm frustrated, <laughs> first of all. But but now I've learned, and instead of letting the frustration overtake me and going into stress and overwhelm and anxiety, what I've learned is that, okay, when I hit frustration, there's something here that's telling me something's not working that to look at my life and my situations and go, okay, what is frustrating me and why? And is there a different way I can do it? Or do I need to let this go? And so now I thank the frustration when I'm frustrated. I'm like, thank you. What's the message? What, like, how can I change my life to rise above it and become better for myself and for my family and, you know, all the people that I want to reach. Oh my gosh. Yes all the gold there and then as you were speaking like something else came in I'm like oh okay I feel exactly that same way about resistance I deeply resist my resistance (laughs) hilariously enough even though I think it's 
so pivotal to build a new relationship to resistance when we're doing any kind of like healing or evolutionary work. And while experiencing resistance, it's like a really amazing time to like also like, okay, how do I work with this and apply divine discernment? Because usually resistance is from two different places. It's either showing us where we're still in default mode or autopilot and comfortable, aka ultimately who we don't want to be anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's like sucking us back in because it's safe and because we don't have to worry about uncertainty. And then that's our signal that like, ooh, lean into this, like keep going with whatever you're pursuing that you're resistant to or deciphering like, oh, if this is resistance, sometimes our organism perhaps wants to heal and evolve through the thing you're targeting. However, it's just like only ready for bite-sized pieces and only like a little bit at a time. Cause oftentimes if we didn't have like, let's say emotional attunement or all of our needs met to the degree that we needed as kids, we don't learn how to one, take care of ourselves and be attuned to our own feelings. And then we also have no emotional capacity to deal with pain. So usually healing takes processing a lot of pain and other big emotions, right? So when we experience resistance, sometimes we're like, oh, my body's just saying like a little at a time, go slower. And like, you know what I mean? Give this the space that it needs. Or the third reason is like, if there's resistance on a soul level, then it's like knock on another door. Oh, I love that. I, you word things so beautifully. You bring them into where there's a visual, like with the leadership and the expert, I've never heard anybody say something that's expired in your life, but I literally see a jar. Like if I go to my pantry and I want to eat something and it's expired, well, no, I don't, I'm not going to eat it. So I, and just now what you just said, putting, bringing a picture to the mind and bringing it into reality just to understand the concept. Cause some of these concepts can be difficult to embrace because they are, quantum they are energetic they are subconscious so really bringing those words in to bring it into reality and say okay okay i get how to do this because i can relate it to something physical is i I just think it's beautiful how you speak oh my gosh thank you only because analogies help me so much too (laughs) like i'm so glad that that serves other people as well because like that makes it feel accessible and manageable to me like you said very complex abstract concepts and journey all together and it's just like i'm like okay how do i not get overwhelmed with even thinking about what i need to do (laughs) because you know usually like all of our old self will say will fight us in becoming the new and just like that's another thing I think is so important to embrace for anybody doing any kind of healing work sometimes we think our resistance is because like oh this isn't for me this might this must not be the right path it's like hey girl (laughs) we're gonna have to you know like really understand that like your ego that's meant to protect you doesn't want you to try on new things Mm-hmm. it doesn't for your own best interest how, so it's most of the time it's gonna feel bad usually at the beginning sometimes halfway through but that doesn't mean that it's not good for you like if it doesn't I genuinely believe it's like if it doesn't challenge you it won't change you and what you don't challenge like in your thoughts and beliefs and perspectives um, unless you can't change what you don't confront Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just like so important to kind of understand, like there's pain even in the good stuff. And unless you're like willing to like continuously analyze and observe things um, that pull you out of this place of safety, you're probably never going to stop experiencing the suffering that you do today. Yes, absolutely. I know for me, when I started on my spiritual journey, um, um, I mean, my family was struggling. I was depressed and, com- you know, just at my wits end where I just didn't want to live anymore. As you mentioned in the beginning, like it, it comes to a point where you just I don't I didn't know myself. I didn't trust myself. I nothing was working out and, and nothing was enjoyable. And then the first things that I did kind of like you with the crystals, like mine was meditation and and a manifesting and, and reading the book E squared and just you know, dabbling in it. But there were so many times that I was like, oh my gosh, is this okay? Is this, because I have a church background, like, is this devil work? <laughs> like, what, Is this okay? But 
but I knew to ask, like, if this isn't for me, release it from me. But if it is for me, give me more steps into it. And I found that peace within that I had never experienced before that just took me step by step. So for me, mine was just little steps at a time of how does this feel? Like you said, trying it on. Does, how does this outfit feel? How does it look? How, you know, going in that way and and ultimately realizing that I was learning to trust myself and the divinity within and the wisdom that I had that I carried within that I that I never knew or understood and that I always doubted, trusting that and then I will be led to new opportunities and those opportunities may scare the shit out of me like becoming an author saying yes to writing in a book and sharing your story that's a huge like i really want to do this but there's fear and limitation of like but can i am i ready for this what would i share and and stepping into it anyway knowing that it'll bring courage it'll it'll bring clarity it'll help another layer of healing for myself and um, just stepping into it through the fear, through the limitations, through the doubt and trusting it'll come out beautiful on the other end. Oh my goodness. Everything you said. And as you were speaking, like another thing came through and it was just kind of like, we're all like on this journey of like, let's say up leveling, right? Mm -hmm. Claiming the next version of ourselves, like claiming our divinity. But what we forget to realize is that like, we're, we are going to be stretched to reach that next level and then actually be able to sustain it and embody it. And, you know, we're like seeking this completely new way of being and existing and then forgetting that like in order to operate where we actually want to be we're going to have to grow like literally rise to the occasion and be transformed in the process to become a different human and that's going to pull us you know it's going to really like <laughs> put us through the ringer in some ways like you know like diamonds we're going to be put through friction to become shiny to become that brand new version of us and you know what else came to mind? Because we are speaking about like on the Empowered podcast, right? About courage, resiliency, like what is the formula for that? And I was thinking about courage and I really feel like based on what you shared about, you know, like God guiding the way, show me what's available to me here and what's for me and take care of the rest. And um, it's like the reminder for me that's been pivotal. And I'm sure for you is that like, my courage resides in the fact that I'm never alone. Yes, understanding and claiming my divinity, so pivotal, but then also understanding that like we are always led. It's a matter of seeing how. And, you know, if it wasn't for us, we wouldn't be traversing it in this moment. And just like, there's some quotes from the Bible that really have stuck out to me in my own study of it in different ways. And I can't remember the actual wording, but it's kind of a like, um, I don't remember if it's God or Jesus like favors the meek. Mm -hmm. And like, to me, that always reminds us just like, hey, when we're in our darkest hell, whenever we're really traversing like our personal, you know, underground, our shadow, our pain, like when we just keep praying and asking for assistance, asking to be shown what's what the gold in this shit is, we, it, that kind of intel will be delivered. And honestly, you can only experiencing it, experience it by trusting yourself to go there and being open with no agenda or expectations. And every time it will come through, it really will. But you have to land there and be humble. And you know that other quote, it's like you have to arrive as a child at the kingdom of heaven to be let in. And that means to be in our innocence and humility and to ask for help and live as like in prayer, like as a living prayer. And then we will always be accompanied. And we always are. It's just a matter of opening our eyes more and seeing the blessings, gifts, and the signs everywhere. Right. And that gives me courage because I'm like, Every time I really needed it, I was shown that I was not alone and I'm not here to bear this cross on my own and, and so on. Yes, absolutely. I love exactly how you just described that. I, I wrote in the book, uh, Sacred Medicine in September, it came out not to be confused with Jaguar medicine, but in Sacred Medicine, that's exactly what I talked about is that, um, 
I felt so lonely and realizing that I have that inner wisdom and that inner divinity to, to tap into. I may not know it all, but I do have the knowledge within me that does know it all and can guide me. And I think you're right, being meek and humble and saying, you know what? I don't know if this is right. I don't know if this is true. I don't know, um, you know what to do with this, but I'm willing to be guided and led. And if this is what's showing up for me, I'm willing to be, have the open mind to look at it and try it on and see maybe this is for me and my mind can't grasp it, but my intuition and my inner wisdom is saying, hey, look at this. Totally. And I think like, if we're like literally owning that to be human is to live in a very cyclical nature going from like, in terms of like versions of ourselves from being like born to living to death, rebirth and so on. That means like with every single step of the way comes its own inherent, you know, wisdom and teachings. And again, it's just like showing up to every phase and be like, okay, like what's available to me here. And even when we're going through like an intense death phase and coming completely undone, I feel like it's in those very moments that we're actually shown what we're capable of and our true capacity, strength, intuitive understanding, and abilities only come forward when there's no other way about getting through the situation. And it's just like this beautiful, like, again, like exposure of what we're truly competent of and capable of when we're like pressed up against the wall and we just have to access that within ourselves. And it's like, holy wow, like this like intense um, experience that like literally brought me to my knees and forced me to put myself back together like never before actually showed me what I was always capable of but incapable of seeing in myself and isn't that like the most priceless thing in the world absolutely yes I agree oh my gosh yeah because all of those moments that I thought brought me to my lowest points are some of the wisdom that I draw on now that brings me to the courage and through the empoweredness. Uh, yeah, it's it's so true. So it's just changing that story, that narrative saying this is here for a reason and I can use it for good instead of allowing it to overtake us and bring us down and continue to stomp on us when we're down. It's how we look at it. Isn't, isn't courage like so much a byproduct of like witnessing how much we've actually survived <laughs> and just be like, oh, like, and I didn't die there <laughs> and I didn't die there and I got through that okay somehow. And then it's just like, oh, wow, if I really reflect on everything I've overcome and even potentially thrive through when I thought it would be the end of me, like today, this is where I pool my courage from because it's like, I didn't think it was survivable, got evidence that it was again and again and again. And today I'm like, who am I to think that I'm not cut out for this? Like, clearly I don't have the higher perspective that God does. Why would I doubt its wisdom and think that I'm not meant for this? And I'm not meant to exactly derive all the gold insight and wisdom that I'm meant to offer another in this exact situation just like this big reality check of like, oh, wow, like, <laughs> gotta take a moment, and just like get myself in line here. <laughs> yes, so true. So do you, uh, I love the name of your chapter, Wounds as Portals Back to Our Power in Jaguar Medicine. Is there anything you'd like to share about your chapter? Hmm. Yeah, I guess like the premise to everything that I wrote there is that like, our sovereignty and the true liberation available to us today is by going to unpack and heal our safety wounds, like stuff related to um, that we went through that first broke our ability to see ourselves safe in the world or the world as a safe place. So oftentimes, like when we went through different experiences as children, it didn't even have to be anything jarring or tragic. It could have even just been something in the household where everything was always volatile or you were always moving or there was a ton of dysfunction that gave us the impression to our little minds that like, I'm not safe to either be or express or be alive 
or you know what I mean, even like pursue things that I love to do, whatever the case was based on who you were as a child. And then unfortunately, we continue to carry that in our body, like our hormones still pumping through us as though we're in danger today, unless we tend to that. And also knowing that we're actually constantly restricting ourselves from expression or pursuing our goals or being who we really are in the world based on what happened to us then. And like what you mentioned, it's like when I was five, I was almost abducted. And that was the first time that ultimately I said, like my power was taken from me because our power is in our ability to be those conscious co-creators and do whatever we want and feel called to in the world. However, today I wouldn't be pursuing any of that if I hadn't healed and integrated the origin wound where I believe that's not possible for me. And it's a danger for me to try to exist and that I wasn't like a mistake and that people aren't here to hurt and deceive me. So that's kind of like what I really touched on and also like the other different kinds of trauma or um, that create safety wounding that many of us carry. And then in turn, unless we realize we're carrying that stuff, we continue to live in like this paranoid state and we don't even realize it and keep hindering our ability to rise into our thrones and be the leaders that we're here to be in whatever right. And like I shared a little bit more about like my immigration story too, because um, I mean, without like really um, getting too into detail around it. Like, um, it was a surprise. Like I lived in Ukraine until I was, um, a little bit past six. And just one morning, my parents woke me up and got me dressed and stuffed me in a white van, like told me to go to sleep. We drove to Poland. Like we got out of the van, they gave the drivers money. We got on a plane, came to Canada happily ever after didn't know that we're leaving our family for good, didn't even know that Canada existed. None of us spoke English. We had to start from the ground up. My parents ran out of money. I absorbed, you know, as we're like such little sponges as children, the survival stress of two adults without a penny left to live on anymore. And that created so much commotion too between my parents. You can imagine people under high stress, like super insecure about the language, having a really hard time finding a job, having nowhere to go back to, can't afford a way back home, um, left everything behind and don't know anybody here. And they're always fighting with each other. And then I become the object of blame because I make things harder. And they just didn't have the emotional capacity or maturity to not constantly outsplash their inner turmoil onto me because you know, like I was the only thing that would take it and not fight back. And so lots of my safety wounding came from like being uprooted without notice and put into a completely different world where I was at the brunt of all of my parents' stress and pain. And I was absorbing that in my organism because that just happens symbiotically with your caregivers. And I was actually taking it on through my little limited impressions that like I'm at fault. I'm to blame for everyone's problems. I'm always destroying my parents' life. I'm the cause of their suffering. And that's where all my subconscious beliefs came from. Not only is it dangerous to exist because my parents are always hurting me, abusing me, and blaming me, I, it's also dangerous to exist because I'm always going to be the problem with everyone that I'm with. And not only is it dangerous to be alive, period, but like, it's also dangerous anywhere I go because here I am in a new country and the, all the impressions I'm receiving is that like, I'm lost, I'm unwanted, especially at school. I was, like you said, always bullied, always the new kid. We moved every single year. So the moment I'd even get a friend, if I was ever so lucky without any English, then like I would lose them right away. And so that really got etched into my subconscious that like nothing is ever safe everywhere is full of rejection. I can't count on anyone. I'm unwanted and my sense of safety shattered. And like, of course that really impacted me without conscious awareness until I did this work as an adult in terms of like ever feeling at ease for one, <laughs> even knowing what peace is 
and not always assuming the worst in everyone in every situation and just being terrified to live my life, let alone go after my goals or dreams. Like that is just like a far reach or even having love in my life, you know, until like this work came about and like became my practice and like my offering, I was so stumped because of my safety wounds. And so my whole chapter is really about that until we understand that a lot of our behavior today is from a place of lack of safety. And unless we go to the events where that lack of safety came from and the shitty beliefs that are accompany that lack of safety, then we're literally slaves to ourselves and we'll continue to be at war within, you know? And it's just like, really, it's necessary unless we want to continue to feel like at the mercy of our circumstances. Wow. You are such an inspiration of hope. And I mean, with through with all that you've been through and where you are today, just showing people that they can do it and you can empower and have courage over all the things that you've been through and, and rewrite that story and become a whole new you and up level and use all of that shit <laughs> and turn it to gold. I just thank you so much for sharing your story and, and opening up to us and, and letting us see a piece of you and about your chapter and, and your life really and your life's work. So if, if people want to get in touch with you or work with you, how, how can they do that? Totally. I would love that. Um, we can either connect via Facebook. I live on Facebook more than I do on Instagram or any other platform. I have like the business page, which is, which is just like a landing page, which is just mastering human. Since all of this work is about, you know, mastering the human condition and experience and all that comes with that. Or my personal Facebook group, which is like our private inner work haven called mastering human dash the inner work haven and that's where i spend the most time offering free resources tools and insights for people going through these rebirth cycles really claiming who they're here to be becoming agents of divinity and also finding like you said the treasure in their trauma and leveraging their past experiences using them as ammunition today in creating conscious and healthy relationships and a lifestyle that they love and then on instagram is just mastering dot human yeah i would love to connect with anyone that's gone through similar stuff that's looking to go deeper on it if they're looking to get deeper mentorship or somatic healing to release that trauma that would be amazing i love it thank you so much and of course if they want to read more of your story they can do so in jaguar medicine Fierce Feminine Frequency Keepers Birthing the New Earth. I love the side, subtitle of the book. And that comes out on January 14th, 2022. And there'll be a summit and we'll be promoting the book in January. So there'll be lots of exciting things happening around the book. And I just have really, really enjoyed this conversation. And I thank everyone who is watching for being here and, and meeting my Jaguar sister, Myrna. Uh, I'm sorry, Marina. <laughs> I wouldn't say Myrna. Anyway. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm so excited for everyone that's going to tune in the group too, to like meet you, Amber, and to connect with you further and all the fantastic work that you do. And like to hear more about your story as well, because I know it's so potent and you know like if we're not doing this stuff for us like what i've heard so much and what you shared is just like do it for the higher power do it for the higher will that's here for us to heal humanity and sometimes courage can just come from just that it's like if i'm not going to do it for myself i'll do it for like the benefit of mankind and does that not ever motivate you more than just be like oh poor me no it's about every single person in humanity Yes, absolutely. I felt that come through me so powerfully in Jaguar medicine there like because I wrote in sacred medicine, but it was more um, my personal story about my family, but I'm a new grandmother now. And so Jaguar medicine brought out that grandmother energy of me of it's not just saying I'm doing this for my family. Now I have more lineage on the earth. It's saying I'm doing this for my community and beyond and that there are injustices that I have to stand for and say it is no longer okay for this to happen in the world. 
And so, yeah, I totally agree. Now is the time um, we're birthing the new earth and raising our frequency and it, it's time to stand and, and share our our hearts and our service and, and all that we have to offer and um, just really circle around each other in support and encouragement. If not us, then who? Like literally, and anything we consent to or giving permission for and like how can we do that without a conscience right so it's like leading by example this is not okay within me this is not okay around me and then I'll inspire other people just by doing my own inner work and taking action and it's like what else can we do it doesn't have to be any more complicated than that hallelujah <laughs> yes so true <laughs> Yay, I'm so happy to have had this conversation. I love, I think you're a beautiful person and I'm so excited to be connected with you through Jaguar Medicine and otherwise now. Yes, oh, thank you so much. I know the ladies in Jaguar Medicine are just amazing. So I'm so glad that I get to get to know them on a deeper level and share them with my community. And I will just leave our viewers with this quote and then um, we'll finish the podcast. So the quote is, you hold the courage within allow it to emerge moment by moment until you embody your most courageous self thank you again thank you so much love that so much yes see ya